This is a very basic video about fermentation fridges. I've seen lots of people ask questions about fermentation fridges, what they are, how they work. This is going to be a quick video just to set you straight. This is one of my fermentation fridges. I've got four of them. They all follow exactly the same principle. The fridge itself has got a temperature sensor in here, which at the current time is just taped gently with a bungee strap to the fermenter. This is a lambic that I'm doing. I'm fermenting this at 16 degrees. I'll show you the ink bird temperature controller in a minute. Very, very simple. Always works on the temperature from the probe from the ink bird, not the temperature set in the fridge. Just always fridge full on. This will work for all my fermentation fridges are larder fridges, which means they're almost as tall as my partner. <laughs> Actually, she's probably a bit shorter than anyway, which means I could, should I desire, get two fermenters in there. I always remove the shelves that come with them, whether they're glass or wire, and put a huge chunk of wood in, or as you'll see in one of the other fridges that I'll show you in a minute, a piece of six mil steel, which I've cut. In cold weather, you don't really want a fridge to be a fridge. If you want to keep the temperature up, so there's these small, and these are greenhouse heaters. And depending on where you get them from, you can get them from tool station, they're about 15 quid. You can get them from eBay, they're about a tenner. Get the one without the plug, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. And if you're gonna buy one, get one without a thermostat, because you don't want a thermostat cutting off at about 10 degrees or whatever, because they're designed for greenhouses. You want one that's gonna get quite wham. Um, so no thermostat also makes it cheaper. No plug also makes it cheaper. So these are the component parts. We've got the larder fridge. This one was the most expensive one I ever bought. It was um, 40 quid, I think. I got a couple for free and one I paid 15 pounds for. Bit of wood, quid maybe, if you've got a neighbor who's into DIY, next to nothing. Greenhouse eater, tenner, and then the ink bird. I'll just take you through the ink bird now. Must excuse my slightly untidy work area. When I'm not brewing, I do things like make rings out of old coins. Anyway, that's not what you want to see. You want to see the ink bird. This is straight out of the box. This is how it comes out of the box. So it really is about as easy as it gets. You plug the ink bird in and it will tell you two temperatures the set temperature and the temperature that it is at the moment the set temperature is what you want right and the uh, measured temperature uh, is what it is you can control all of those parameters easily by using the up and down arrows so your target temperature is 20 you've got a, hot, a heat differential of 2 that's 2 degrees before the heat kicks in and a cooling differential of 2 degrees before the cooling kicks in that's to stop it bouncing backwards and forwards um, you've got an alarm for the temperature if it gets too high an alarm for the temperature if it gets too low now um, the rest you can pretty much uh, disregard, um, but you can set things like a calibration. If, um, if the temperature probes one degree out, um, you can compensate for it on here, but you probably won't need to do that. So you've plugged it in, then you chuck your temperature probe, as you saw, inside the area that you want to be measured. If you've got a keyser, um, then you would put that in a bottle of or dip it in a, in a bottle of water. It is waterproof. It's designed to go in aquariums. And then you've got these two outputs. And this is where <clears throat> it's as easy as falling off a log. 
you've got one for heating that's where you plug your little greenhouse heater into and you've got one for cooling and that's where you plug your fridge into you don't need to do any other wiring than put a plug on the end of your greenhouse heater it is as simple as that on here when it gets too hot it switches on to cooling and when it gets too cold it switches on to heating that is it that is as complex as it gets let's show you one of the other fridges show you two of the other fridges both controlled by ink birds this one uh is this one no i paid 15 for that this one i got for free at the moment this is just lagering um, a mandarina bavaria lager which i made a month or so ago it'll be in here for probably about two months this is a piece of four mil sheet steel and the paint's rubbed off but it's not massively rusty it's a little bit of oxidization on there this did have glass shelves in like this I did, we did pressure test it outside with a, a full fermenter so that will be 30 kilos plus half a kilo probably for the fermenter and it held up but still scared me so sheet metal and again we've got just the standard greenhouse heater again with no thermostat now you'll notice on both of my fermentation fridges that I've shown you so far and also on this one is currently this has got wine in it <laughs> for my missus again smaller greenhouse heater this is on at the moment but you don't want the thermostat because it will start cutting off when it gets to a silly temperature all I've done is drilled a little hole in the side of the fridge to uh, focus and then push the lead through ideally in an ideal world it's been a bit dusty in, there. in an ideal world I'd put a, a little plastic tube through so that there was no potential for the metal on the outside here to rub against the flex but this isn't going anywhere and I've wrapped the flex in some electrical tape as it goes through so the other thing to bear in mind is what type of fridge are you working with this has got all of its cooling gubbins self-contained in this unit at the back some fridges pump coolant through the skin you have to be careful when you drill your holes this is a hole for the temperature sensor in this one this one i'll just put it through the door jam you need to be careful not to hit any of the capillary channels that run coolant around now i don't i think only one of my fridges has got that but even so i wanted to be a little bit careful so you can run it through the door jam that's okay that's fine and also I don't know if I can show you on any of these. At the back of some fridges, typical, isn't it? Can't get to that. At the back of some fridges, you've got a little drain hole for your, um, any, um, here, I can get to, I can't get to this ego. Well, and again, really dusty and whatever, but you could run your temperature probe through there. If it's big enough, you could also run your heater through there as well, but drilling a hole in the bottom here, I figured there's not going to be any capillaries through, through there. So all of my fermentation fridges have the heater wire going in through the very bottom. You could possibly come up through the floor. I doubt there'd be any capillaries there that you're going to run the risk of drilling through. So again, just a tiny little hole. I think that's about a four mil hole, just enough for the probe to go in. It really is as simple as that. A fridge with a heater in there and you switch via the ink bird between heating and cooling 
and using those temperature differentials it means that as soon as it gets to your temperature if it goes because that heater's still on when that turns off the heater's still going to be heating for a little while because it's got residual heat in it what you don't want is for the temperature to go up and then the fridge to kick in to try and put it down and by the time the fridge has pulled it down it's hit the lower temperature and then the heater comes on so you don't want that swing between heating and cooling that's why you have those differentials to be set in the ink bird now the, all of my ink birds are controlled via the Wi-Fi app which looks like this and as you can see I've got my four fermentation fridges I've also got in some of the rooms just to check the temperature in the rooms I've also got a couple of spares in boxes somewhere or other every now and then they'll crop up on Amazon cheapest chips I'll put a link down here to buying them from Amazon uh, for both the Wi-Fi and the non Wi-Fi if you're not a control freak and you want uh, just to set it and forget it then they're about 25 quid uh, 35 quid for the Wi-Fi version now realistically I don't need the Wi-Fi version it was handy when we was away and I was doing a stepped crash I was doing one degree a day for a stepped crash so I could change it on here while away on the boat the other thing to bear in mind is although you can do all this with a little under counter fridge if you want to put something like this in with a spunding valve on top a small under counter fridge isn't going to be big enough even if you take the spunding valve off it still won't be big enough the other thing to remember in fridges is sometimes they've got that shelf at the bottom which hides the compressor and all the gubbins so this needs to stand on something full width in the fridge that's why all of mine are larder fridges tall fridges the question is probably could you use a fridge freezer if the top part is big enough well yes you could um, you'd still have your temperature probe strapped to the side of your fermenter uh, with some insulation so that it's measuring pretty much this with uh, just as a separate note with all of the firmzilla products you can in the lid put a thermo well which goes down i'm thinking of getting some because i've got this and these which i've just cleaned out uh, these are the all-rounders brilliant really really do recommend them um, but the thermo well would go actually into so you want to measure really what the watt temperature is not necessarily what it is on the outside so the thermo well goes all the way in so you then run your probe in through the side of the fridge down the tube in the thermo well into here so let's review the basics fridge hole inside for temperature probe or you could just come through the door jam if you're drilling try and avoid and it's difficult to tell where they are any of the cooling channels that might be in the walls you can always come up through the vent at the back the drain vent at the back cheapest chips heater with no thermostat just one that comes on stays on and an ink bird that is all you need it's not rocket science and what this means is you can control your fermenting environment perfectly try and avoid doing what i've just done which is opening the door and leaving it open because all you're doing then is filling it with air from the ambient temperature around you this is the first time i've opened this in about three or four days i think by the way those who follow this channel this is my naturally fermented lambic and the lambic style i should say is one that you don't pop yeast in what you do after you've been through the mashing and the boiling there's a separate video about this it goes into something called a cool ship and then left overnight for the natural yeasts to go in and that's why this will be about a month in here right i hope that has been helpful and useful if it has please consider subscribing to this little old channel it's not always as messy in it actually
it is always as messy in here uh please consider subscribing to the channel if it's been helpful click the thumbs up because it makes me feel loved and if you've got any questions stick them in comments below for now that is that